Are you ready for UFC 307 this weekend? Are you sure you're ready? Because it's going down in Salt Lake City this weekend and you can get in on all the action with my partners at DraftKings Sportsbook right now. All new customers who bet $5 can get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, sign up using my promo code SUNNY. DraftKings, the crown is yours. That's $200 in bonus bets instantly after betting just $5. You can use your $200 in bonus bets to stay in on all the action. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry. You can still join in on all the fun at DraftKings Daily Fantasy for a shot at winning cash prizes. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers, use my promo code SUNNIN. Bet just $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Right now, that's promo code SUNNIN only at DraftKings Sportsbook. I'm trying to think of who put it out. Is it Apple or Prime? But it's Vince Vaughn, and it's called Bad Monkey. Bad Monkey, yes, I yeah. saw that. I didn't watch it yet. By the way, speaking of your recommendations, I am uh, an episode and a half deep on Mr. McMahon, oh, yeah. Mr. SUNNIN. Yeah. Wow, it's good. Oh, boy. Interesting how they can do that. Like the, like the power of a library, you know, I mean, all, all they're really doing is got access to his library and they do a couple of sit down interviews. They, it's, it's kind of fascinating. And then every 10 years, you kind of recycle that same story and tell it differently. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it is compelling. I know all those stories. I, I was sitting, just listening to them again and again. Yeah, I didn't know. I was unaware of, first of all, I was unaware that the whole thing happened with the union, trying to unionize. And then Hulk Hogan, ratting out uh, um, Jesse Ventura, right? Yep. Wh or whatever you want to call it. I mean, you know, but he, I guess he stopped it from happening. So today, as of today, they are not unionized, right? That's right, yeah. They're not even in the SAG. Well, I guess that's, that's what you're saying, yeah. Um, that's crazy. How could they not be SAG affiliated? They're on television as entertainers. Stunning, stunning. Well, and you got, you've got the stunts and you've got, you got I mean, it's just so many uh, issues. Yes. Are they well paid, Jail, overall? Yeah. Yeah, um, but not what you would think. I mean, for somebody that's the star of a TV show and a multi-billion dollar, like, no, there's not, there's not very many million dollar a year contracts and they wrestle 250 days a year. You, you're on the road 250 days a year. Um, I mean, it's a very, very tough life, which was what, you know, what leads to the pills where you got to be awake for this, but then you got to get to sleep because you're going on this flight and you're in a different time zone and you know, then you're party hound anyway, so you're mixing all that stuff with booze. Like, it's just one of these, then your body hurts. So, you, you, it's just, it's a really, uh, or it's a really rough thing, which is where I would think that the SAG would come in. I went to a, excuse me, to a pro wrestling tryout for something called WCW. It was only three days, but it was, it was three of the hardest physical days I've had. It was, it was so difficult. But one of the things that I did while I was there is I watched them set up a wrestling ring. And, uh, Man, that thing is nothing but uh, iron and plywood. And then there's a piece of carpet pad. That, I mean, it's not even a quarter inch that they roll over the plywood. And the way it's built, it, it gives a little bit of spring. But like you'll hear people go, oh, there's springs on there. It's put on spring. It's like, well, the iron, the way it's set, is, but you're still landing on iron. Make no mistake. You're having carnies set it up. So you're throwing guys into turnbuckles and ropes that you you hope are supported. But I mean, it's it's just carny. You're in a traveling circus on the road. and. I don't know. It, it is amazing that there has, and there has been uh, deaths and injury and claims, and it's it's not as though they've been getting away with it. So we're looked the other way. Like it's it's been really bad, and somehow they've still avoided. What is the difference between a UFC cage feel and a wrestling cage feel, and therefore a boxing? You've been, I'm sure, in all yes. three. The sturdiness. The sturdiness is what I would say. That the the. They're all built the same, but then underneath the UFC cage, if I could tell this right, so you've got the platform underneath the cage, it has braces. The whole thing is braced, so it doesn't move. They build it the exact same way in a wrestling ring, they don't put the braces. So it's just the way that it's built, because it has no braces, it, it does provide a little bit of give. So when they slam each other, there's a bounce and there's yep. an effect, and it also is yep. easier on their bodies. And, and is boxing very similar to UFC in the way that yes. it's firmness and everything in the canvas? Correct, yes. Yep. Yeah, I remember, like, you know, where I train, uh, you know, at my place, I remember, you know, we go barefoot, and it is a very strange feeling, you know, being, I, I think when the, maybe when the canvas is new, it's a little grippier, but I was always kind of freaked out by the fact of how slippery it felt, you know, as a new guy doing sure. it, I was like, this is weird, but I mean, you're so used to it, you've been doing it for so long, um, 
By the way, I saw something that really interested me. I, I don't know if you saw this, but Ilya Teporia recently came out and said that he doesn't and wouldn't fight Conor McGregor, yes. right? Now, we're talking about WWE. We're talking about, you know, salesmanship and all that, right? <sighs> Building a star out of somebody. If you want to fight Conor McGregor, the best way to do it is to do what Ilya Teporia just did, right? It's like, it's like the worst mistake people make is you get a guy who's ranked, you know, 18th. He just wins a fight and even sometimes barely. And they say, who do you want next? And he says to Cormier or Rogan, he goes, I want Connor. And he tries to like elicit a feeling out of it. Like you're nothing, man. And I got you. And it's like, no, no, no. Connor's at home laughing. But when Ilya says, I will not, I wouldn't even fight that guy. I can only imagine that had to get under Connor's skin. Yes, and, and, and I fully agree with you. That approach has only been done one other time, which was by Justin Gaethje. And, and Justin doing it, it, it was an approach to get the fight, right? Acting like he didn't want it. Very obvious, I'm aware. But um, it was also a realistic fight. That would have been a lot of fun, and Connor could have won, and people would have wanted to see it. Ilya Tapori, though, is in a position at 145 pounds, where that match is never going to happen in any type of a universe. Oh, and by the way, uh, he's got what Connor, what, he's got the belt. He is a guaranteed main eventer. He doesn't need Connor. So it, it is it is interesting there to watch those guys, you know, act like they're thirsty. It's 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 always a mistake. And Ilya sounded very sincere when he said it. And then he even went further. And he said, man, that's not the guy I used to idolize. This guy is more associated with drugs and alcohol now than he is with the sport. I represent the sport of which I'm undefeated and the world champion. It's like checkmate. Got him. Yeah, he is his unshakable belief in himself, right? Ilya Teporia. He just can't like every time I see this guy, I'm impressed because he just doesn't have the possibility of losing in his mind at any moment, which is very unique because he's fighting Max Holloway. And it's like Max Holloway finds a way to win and constantly surprises me, most specifically and most recently with Gaethje, right? Especially in the last 10 seconds, which everybody spoke about ad nauseum. But he doesn't seem like a guy that is could lose right now. And then I look at Ilya and I'm like, well, he can't lose. And I'm like, what happens in this fight? Because it's really interesting. That self-confidence, man, I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if you're working at an office job. I don't care if you're talking to a girl and trying to impress her. The unshakable belief in yourself and self-talk that these guys do, people like Ilya Teporia, and really believe it, Chael, because there are guys that say, I'm the best, I'm going to kill him, I'm unbeatable. And you go, it's great. You're, talk, you know, you're, you're saying the right words, but you don't necessarily believe it. When I look at somebody like Ilya Teporia, I don't think he has lose in his vocabulary. And then you look at Max Holloway, same thing. What happens? They clash. What happens? Who do you like in that fight? Yeah, well, 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 it's so interesting, right? Because, because if Ilya's going to beat him, and he is currently the favorite, but he started out as a two-to-one, and, and somebody set that line, and the audience with their money came and said, you got it wrong. And, I, and Max never took over the lead, but God damn, I mean, it is a close line right now at DraftKings, just for example. If Ilya's going to beat him, how? He's not going to take him down and keep him there. Nobody else has. He's not going to submit him, and he wouldn't even pretend he is. He's going to have to outbox him, which he might be able to do. Like, Ilya is a really surprisingly excellent boxer, but so is Max. And then Max also has that chin. I mean, Dustin Poirier touched him up. Dustin Poirier is the one guy that really put kind of a, a gap. It was just one of the, Dustin called it a rhythm. He said, I, I learned Max rhythms in the tape. I knew how to disturb it. And I was like, okay, really interesting. Great studying. And it does appear that's what you went and did. But I, but I only suggest that nobody else has been able to do that. I mean, guys not only can't beat Max, they can't win rounds. Uh, you know, when, when Max put Justin Gaethje down, who was a champion at the time, he's the BMF champion. He was arguably the number one contender getting ready to fight Islam at a weight class that Max doesn't compete in. Max won all 20 minutes. He, he, he had this amazing 10 seconds where he finished him. He was blowing him away on the card. So, I mean, there was nothing remotely competitive and I don't know what it is that Tapori would offer that Gaethje wouldn't. And in addition, Gaethje was also an All-American wrestler who used no wrestling because he didn't see the opportunities with Max. So, I mean, if he's going to beat him in Tapori, he, he's going to have to outbox him. And by the way, he's going to have to show us a conditioning that he hasn't had to show us before. Even in the Volk fight, he was able to get out of there in seven minutes. Max is, is the master of five rounds. I, I don't know if I could think of a pace that is higher than Max is. So with that said, I, I don't know that I'm picking Max. I mean, I really don't know. It's it, This Teporia is good, man, and he's tactical, and he knows where to use his energy. If anyone can take you off your feet with a punch, it's going to be Teporia. But uh, I don't know, but man, for somebody to say that he's a two-to-one favorite over Max, Max is very young. He's just a veteran. 
People forget that when he came into the UFC, yeah, he was the youngest UFC guy. When he was in, at one point, he was the youngest UFC person on the entire roster. I don't even know if he's 30 yet. I said, okay, let's think. I was on a card with him, okay? I was on a, I was a card with him, and I, and I met him in Boston, and he was 20 years old, and that was 2012. So he would be 32, going on 33. And that's young. In fight years, Randy Couture didn't have his first fight until he was 34. Yep. Do you think that he's going to, like, for me, 32 is very young. And I think the best, from what I've been seeing, some of the best fight years are between 32 and 38. 37, 38 is kind of where, you know, traditionally, and again, there are fighters that are able to push past this, obviously, but it seems to me like the sweet spot, because and I think a lot of it, see if you agree, is that they've molded themselves as human beings as well. They've, they've, they've tasted defeat usually at that point. They've come back from it. They're just more seasoned as human beings and they're as good, if not better, than they were maybe not physically when they were 25 compared to when they're 33, 34. But I don't know. I would take a 34-year-old, 35-year-old fighter all day. They have the experience behind them and Max absolutely has the experience. How, like, I, you're right. I, Ilya Tapori, it's a really good point. He's not going to take him down and control him. Who can take Max down? He's slippery. He's crazy good, right? Max, at the end of his punches, is as good as it gets. His footwork is the best, one of the best in the business. Cardio, fantastic. Marab is maybe the only guy that can really touch him there. Um, yeah, I don't know, Chael. I think I'm going with, I, don't, I think I'm going with Tapori, but I, I'm not confident at all. Yeah, and see, I feel the same way, but I've, I've been influenced. The odds makers and DraftKings are pretty good at this, and they say this guy's going to win. But the next question is the harder one. How? How does it, even by the numbers, he's not the younger, he's not the upper, he's, he's, not, he's not any of these things. Taporia got to number one contendership in a way that the UFC had never done with anybody, which is they kept him away from Max. Max was so clearly above everybody else, and then Volkanovski was so clearly above. But so they built Taporia up, and there's the first guy to get to a title shot that didn't have to go through Max. And so, you know, now they take Max out of the vision. Now they bring him back and it's a different time. And um, I mean, I feel like if I was asking you who's going to win this fight and I go, okay, well, let's change the rules. Let's make that a boxing match. Who do you think is going to win? Who, whoever you think is going to win that is, I, th I think is going to win this, th this contest. And then it does come down to this incredible cardio by Max and maybe Taporia has it, but it is still a question mark. We haven't seen it. And, uh, and Max is smart, too. I mean, Volkanovski didn't have the benefit of being aware of how this guy can slip inside and, and how good this guy's hook is. He didn't have that benefit. And now Max is able to see that tape and go, gotcha. You know, a tape is so important. Like, um, when I was growing up, I would hear about these boxers from the, the, the turn of the century in the 1900s, and they would go 12 years undefeated. But if you were watching a fight back then, that meant that you huddled around a transistor radio. There was no such thing as pay-per-view, and these, these things weren't put on camera. So you were either in the arena or you heard about it. And you just, that footage is so helpful. And there are guys that will come along. I'll use the name uh, Lionel Machida. But Machida came in, and he had this style. And was, we had no idea what this guy was doing. But over time, you got to see a few tapes. You kind of learn if you circle this way, you move that way. Just, just for example, and I think that Taporia did have a few surprise factors that Volk didn't know. And now Max is aware of whether he can capitalize Different story, but I, I think he's got an advantage by seeing that contest. You know, it, it, it's so true because when you look at tape, right, or, or you look at the ability to not only be able to watch tape nowadays, but to be able to really control that tape and rewind it in slow motion and all these things, it's massive, right? And it's like, eventually, you are going to get figured out. Every puzzle, for the most part, maybe not Jones quite yet and who knows, whatever, but nobody has, everybody has figured out the puzzle on, let's say, Anderson Silva, right? I mean, you figured it out to, to an extent, and so did Chris Weidman. You, no matter how good they are, watch enough of them, they will do the same things over and over again, and there is a way to counter it. With great coaching, great mindset, and understanding the science behind everything, you're going to catch up to somebody. To Poria, um, yeah, I, I think the biggest factor that you just mentioned is the fact that he hasn't had the, the cardio. He hasn't had the five-round banger really with nothing like max and the experience so it shocks me then that they would start at two to one and you're right they get it right a lot of the time even when you think they're crazy and i go oh my god i'm betting i'm, I'm taking this fight they're, they're nuts and I'm gonna, the odds are so good they're usually on the money but i don't know what metrics they could possibly use because you're bringing up some really good points and boxer for boxer you have to believe 
that Ilya can beat him. So that said, so you're, it seems like, because we should, we should do this and see who was right, just to have fun with it. Just, yeah. you know, gun to the head, you know, you got to put a bet on it right now if you- Max. You're going Max. Max. Okay. Yep. Not just to be a contrarian, but I'm going to stick to my guns for when I went into this conversation. Did you sway me? Are you persuasive? Yes. Yes, you are. But I'm sticking, and I'm going to go with Ilya. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you who, and, and Teddy Atlas didn't give a prediction, but I hit, did hear Teddy. And there's no mind in boxing that you would respect and take more than Teddy's. And Teddy, when he's breaking down the sport, said that Max is amongst the top three boxers in all of MMA. And then when Teddy watched Deporia, and Teddy actually picked Deporia to beat Volkanovski, which people are going, hey, what are you talking about? But Teddy said, no, this guy's not only the best boxer in the UFC, he's the best boxer ever in the UFC. He didn't even need to be in the UFC. He could be over in boxing. This is a huge claim by Teddy. And he talked about, I mean, you don't understand this guy's footwork. You don't understand his angles. You don't understand. And you're right, I don't. And, and then he went and did it against Volk. And it took him a little time to figure it out. But with that one common opponent, and I do feel that that's the thing that swayed the lines in Vegas. With that one common opponent, if you just look at it on paper, you're going to be misled because there was a completed round and all three judges gave it to Volkanovsky, right? I mean, Teporia was losing the fight. It took him a minute to figure it out and to find him. And Teporia does appear to be special, but that cardio, man, that's just not something you can train. There's a, there's a certain DNA that your body has versus an opponent. And I'm light on the idea. I, I don't predict that Teporia is a guy that's going to fold and or quit. However... We don't know that. There is a volume that Max brings that even the toughest guys like Justin Gaethje can no longer keep their hands up. They can no longer defend their chin because their hands are down. Brian Ortega talked about that. He said, man, I, not only could I not stop him from hitting me, I couldn't keep my hands up anymore. And it's just really interesting, a really intimidating thing to face a guy that's got that weapon. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Where are they fighting? I don't remember. Where is that? They're in Abu Dhabi. Uh, 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 Riyadh, uh, Riyadh, rather. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, Saudi Arabia right? Yep. They're in Saudi Arabia. Yep. Interesting too, because uh, that is, uh, well, uh, Teporia lives in Spain, so there's no home court advantage there. I would imagine, you know, look, I think Max can go anywhere and he's going to be beloved. You know, it's not like he's going to walk into quote unquote enemy territory. He's just so well respected and he's such a gangster, especially after what he did in this last fight with Gaethje. I mean, you just, if you don't respect Max Holloway in this sport, I don't know what you're talking about and what you're doing. So that's not going to be a factor. It's not at any sort of elevation, right? So it's going to be pretty evenly matched. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting thing. I didn't see the Teddy Atlas. I didn't know that he was that high on him. That's, that's the highest praise you can imagine. Yes, called him the best. And this was before he landed that hook and knocked out Volkanovski. Teddy was the only guy on our analyst panel, we're all the experts, that took Teporia. He said, man, you can understand this guy's boxing. He touches you one time, it's a different deal. I was like, really? And then, and then it, it actually went out and happened. Let me tell you this. Um, the... The narrative is very interesting to me, the way that you, you, you tell a story. And if you're the UFC and you're, you're a marketing machine, you have the ability to correct stories that get wrong. But like one, one of the storylines here is, well, hey, Max was really great. It's just no longer his time. His time is being a former champion. It's like, excuse me, he is the current reigning champion. He's the current reigning BMF champion. In fact, Deporia has a condition, did not ask for more money. He demanded that Max's belt be put up. They did not acquiesce, by the way. Max's belt is not on the line, but it's not as though Max's better days are behind him. He could have been a number one contender at 55. He chose to cash this in at 45 because it's not heat with Emporia. That's just his division as he sees it. That's always been the belt that he had, that he wanted back, that he respects the most. I don't know where this idea that well, Max's great days are behind him. He's the sitting, reigning BMF champion. There's only been three. He's one of them. And he's coming off one of the biggest fights in history. And like, just listen, he didn't fight somebody average or rank number five, six, seven. He, that was Justin Gaethje at the height of his powers. And he, listen, I gotta be honest. I, when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I went into that fight thinking Gaethje wins. And I gotta be honest too. I really thought Max was on the bit of a, maybe on the little bit of a downside. What people forget about is what we just spoke about. is Max's age. Here's why. We remember Max as that skinny kid who was in the UFC a long time ago, and we don't put him as part of a, the newer generation, which he's somewhere in the middle, but 32, that's the big shocker. That's the big thing, and I think that's what people think, and that becomes the narrative, that Max is maybe past his prime and he's getting a little older because Illy is so shiny and so new. No, no. Max is young. Max is coming off the best fight, I think, of his life, and he's had some bangers in there. 
He shocked me. He shocked the world. He decided to put it all on the line in the last 10 seconds and banged. How can you not love, respect, and honor that? So that's why Chael is smart by going with Holloway. And I'm going with Taporia just to be a contrarian. Yeah, I mean, I think that you're probably safer, but it's uh, it's just one of these things. Can Taporia beat him? Yes, yeah, sure. Is he younger? Is he hotter? Has he got a better record? Like, all of these things are true. But then how? How becomes the problem? And the answer by the experts is he's going to outbox him. It's like, well, but what do you mean by that? Boxing is... I touch you and you don't touch me. Like, you can get a guy with his gold teeth and his eighth grade education to break down boxing all day long. Yeah, I touch you and you don't touch me unless you believe he's got the power to knock him out. That's a different story. That is what I don't see happening. I just don't see Max's shit. Even when he got went up in, uh, against Dustin Poirier, he was greatly outside. He getting touched up all night. He never went down. Justin Gaethje got those hands on him a few times. He never went down. Man, this guy, this guy is just like the Diaz boys in terms of being a zombie. As I see it, if Max is laying on the canvas out cold, man, that, that's something that for me, when I close my eyes and imagine, I struggle to see. Yeah, I struggle to see that too. You know, it's funny because I think we get caught up in the emotion of it all, right? And it's like, you know, all right, oh, Ilya is so new and he's so hot and he's so this and that. But when you break it down like that and you really talk about the how, really the technical side of it, uh, yeah, you'd have to imagine Max flat on his back. The only other way that this happens is Taporia stays in the fight. He's able to figure Max out and he just wins on points. But that would take five rounds and that would take tremendous cardio because Max is constantly moving. So sure. now I have to imagine that Ilya has nonstop cardio, right? And he has the ability to be sharper on his feet than Max. I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I got to think about yeah. it because I don't want to go back I, I and I don't want to ride the fence. I, I would tell you, I, I'll tell you this my final thought. Like if, if somebody is taking Taporia and you're a better, Instead of handicapping and just going with a straight line, it's like, we'll get a little bit more specific because I think that the people would agree he's got to outbox him. I don't think people think that he can just outpoint him. He's going to have to put him down. Now, there's only four punches in all of the world that are ever created. You got a straight, you got a cross, you got a hook, and you got an uppercut. There's not a fifth punch. So he's not going to knock him out with this, and he's not going to knock him out with this. So do you think he's going to knock him out with this, or do you think he's going to knock him out with the hook? I mean, it can get really specific. And if your team backs and your max is coach, all of a sudden, you're not worried about losing boxing or a footwork or a wrestling game. You're worried about one single punch. And all of a sudden, you're just watching for it. I don't know, man. I just, I think it's a really hard thing. And perhaps Taporia is just this damn good. Perhaps he was going to run through Volkanovsky and he was just waiting to flip that switch and it all ended too early. But for my money, it did end too early. And when you find yourself in a fight that's harder than you thought it was going to be, and that's what Max brings. Max brings a pace where a guy all of a sudden is called taking inventory. But as you're an athlete, you're 15 minutes in and you're doing the math. Okay, I got 10 minutes left, which is 70%. I'm already down one round. I've got to win this next one. My nose is busted. My eyes swollen. He looks fresh. Like these things start going through your head. And so if you're Taporia, you got to bank those early. You got to bank that math early in case it goes to a decision. And based on some of his earlier fights, I think he's a slow starter. As great as he is, by the way, he's very special. I'm being critical. I think he's a slow starter. I, I, don't, I think that's a really long shot to think he's going to come out, sprint, win the first 15, likely fade like everybody else. I don't know, man. There's just not a lot of ways for him to win. And if you turn the gun on me and go, okay, how does Max win? I have just as hard of a time answering that. I really do. Like, there's not a lot of things you can do to Taporia. Yeah, this is one of those things where I just can't see it. Like, I just can't see it. All I see is a great fight. And all I see is two great fighters that are at this. And the most important thing is they're at their supreme confidence level that's like so rare that you know, you know like they're both at that mindset like I said of I cannot lose that's what makes it so interesting that everything I go down in my mind ends with yeah he's gonna win wait but I, well can't do that can't do that can't do that and it cancels each other out that's the makings of a great fight again great matchmaking unbelievable fight can't wait just don't want anything to happen to mess it up please I can't wait to see that one Hey, can I, th I told you about my life. Let me, let me throw you a spoiler. Let me throw you a, a truth that doesn't get discussed by very many fighters, which is every single fight, and that is a broad stroke, it's 99.9. Both guys know who's going to win. The whole thing is an act. Both guys know who's going to win. They could never touch each other and just have fourth grade English class together. They know who the baddest dude in the room is. Every, every time it's this way. So, so, so then when you're looking at it and you're aware of that, you're really trying to figure out, all right, which guy's bluffing? They both say they want it. They both say they can win. Who's bluffing? And when I look at Max, he's a sitting champion. He could have gone for a title at 155, which would make his life easier and more comfortable. 
He was very disciplined. He was willing to give up the weight. He was willing to drop his belt or whatever happened to specifically come for this guy who he knew who it was. He didn't just say, I want, I want whoever wins. No, no. It was Taporia in the front row watching him. He said, I want that guy. I think that Max is sincere. And that's, that's another thing. Taporia is in a spot. He's, he's going to have to fight whoever comes. Generally speaking, both guys know before that fight ever starts who's likely to win. And I think in this case, Max truly believes. The greatest fights you've ever seen are where that deal gets broken, where both guys really believed it was them. And I just think that Max is sincere. I think he really does believe he's going to win. You know, it's so funny you say that because I think you're right because Max recently spoke about Taporia's reaction to the BMF fight with Gaethje, okay? They put a camera on Taporia. He was in the front row. And the general consensus that went around was he looked scared, was the, was the thing, right? That's what everybody talked about. What I loved is they asked Max about that recently, okay? And Max's supreme confidence led him to the best response I've ever seen. I don't know if you heard this. He goes, uh, he goes look, you know, I, I don't think he looked scared. I don't know him. I don't know how he looks when he's, you know, and, he, you know, maybe he's just a little socially awkward. Maybe he doesn't smile a lot, right? Maybe he doesn't get overly excited, right? He goes, that could just be his face. But something in me told me, isn't that a fantastic response? Yeah. You, you don't even have to take the bait, Max. You're so good that you don't even have to say, nah, that dude looks scared. You look scared, Ilya, what's up? No, none of that. He went the other way, which tells me he is not trying to hype himself up, that he does have that supreme confidence. And somewhere deep down, if you really, really pushed him, he would probably go, yeah, he looked a little scared. But publicly, he's gonna be the good guy and he's gonna be, because he understands confidence. Max Holloway, I remember 2016, you're in the blessed era. Blessed is best. And I'm like, wow. I mean, the, the skinny kid who doesn't necessarily look like the toughest guy in the room is just unbelievably confident and awesome. I mean, golly, what a great answer. By the way, speaking of answers, I saw something the other day from your buddy and uh, who I love, Cormier. I don't know if you saw this. They asked him on, uh, Kamaru has a, a, a podcast with- um, Henry Cejudo. Yes, with Henry. And uh, they asked, you know, they were talking about who's the GOAT and they were talking about John Jones. And Camaro started to refer to, compare John Jones to Michael Jordan, basically insinuating that he's the Michael Jordan of MMA. And, you know, look, Cormier joking because he's, you know, a very affable, good guy was like, man, I'm, I, he was, I thought you were, if you're comparing those two, if you're telling me that John Jones is the Michael Jordan of MMA, I'm walking out of the room, right? And he got a little bit like miffed by it. And I'm, I posed the question to you because I know how I feel about it. I feel like John Jones is, you know, and I love and respect Daniel's opinion, but I think a lot of it has to be shaded and colored by the fact that they have this history together. Because why would you include, you know, his, his take on it was, Cormier's take was, well, how could he be the best? Look what he's done, you know, outside the cage. And I just don't think that matters. We're not talking about that. If you're looking for, you know, yeah, Michael Jordan's kept it clean, quote unquote. Maybe John Jones hasn't been perfect his whole career, obviously. Um, but I do see John Jones as our Michael Jordan. I just do. I mean, how do you feel about it? Is that a, is that a fair comparison? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And... <sighs> That's funny. That's actually really funny. It is interesting, the psychology, like for, for Daniel to say, and what Daniel's larger point is, and, and he, he, he remembers this so well because it was so true to him, and other people don't quite remember it, but John Jones popped, right? John, John Jones was on performance enhancers for a large part of his career, and it was proven that that night he was on him and Daniel was not. So, so Daniel's just bringing that in. He's going, hey, man, if you're saying this guy's the GOAT, then you're taking his wins over me. You're, you're taking me out of there. But you're not taking into account how close and competitive I was, and he cheated. He had an advantage. And this is largely Daniel's point. But to your point, John did not always do it dirty. John, when he got caught and he went clean, I mean, you can, you can take one look at his body now. Like, you could drug test a guy, or you could just have me look at him with his shirt off. I will not only tell you with 100% accuracy if he's using, I'll tell you what he is using. I will look at it. I will look at his traps. I will look at his nipples. I will look at his upper abs. I will tell you specifically what fat burners, what growth hormone. I can I'll probably get the, uh, the milliliter all the way down right. What tests, what boosters. EPO, which is a very hard one that people, people can't spot. 
And I, I just share that um, he did do a lot of it clean while he did some of it dirty. Like, th they could both be true. He won a heavyweight championship, having never fought at heavyweight and having never been punched by a heavyweight. He's the reigning heavyweight champion. He's never even hit a heavyweight before. Like, I mean, it's one of these things. This guy's story is very hard to explain. There was a line in one of the great movies. It was called Goodwill Hunting. And I can't remember if it was Aflac or if it was Matt Damon, but they were explaining to the other one that some people can just play. Like the great composers, the great can just play. They didn't have training. They didn't have these special things like other people. They could just play. And that is John with this sport. He just knows how to play. He is not sacrificed. He has not worked harder. He does not know more. He didn't have secrets from his family that got passed down that nobody's learned before. It's none of those things. He can just play. He is dog tough and he keeps getting better. We haven't seen John in a fight yet where he's balanced or dipped. He comes out and is, is confusing for Joe Rogan, who's got to call a fight. Within 30 seconds, John will do a move that he's never done before. John comes out and walks against Glover to share and he rips his bicep off while they're standing up. That has never been done before. Joe didn't even know what to call the move. I still don't know what that move is called, but he always does something you've never seen. He's always innovating. He's always getting better. So you can't break down tape and you can't quite go out there with a plan because if you watch five John Jones fights, the one uh, comparison, a divisible you will come down to is he always does something new. That's what the greats do, right? There's a, he, he is truly a special and I can't explain it. He can just play. Wow, that's really great. I, I, I am stuck. Remember the other day we were talking and I brought up a Snickers bar, right? I brought up Snickers bar and you were like- King okay, size box King of size bar. box of Snickers bars. And you said, so I can't get Snickers bars out of my mind. Okay, now I cannot get men's nipples and how they could be detectable, okay? Sure. So I have to know. You pointed traps, you said yep. nipples, um, and you said something, uh, and stomach? Upper abs, yes. Okay, so yes. What, is the, what is the telltale sign? It's a vein thing or a... It is definitely a look, and if, if we had some photos and I, I could point to them, I, I might do a little bit better than verbalizing it, but yes, and, and, and with certain use, particularly with growth hormone, but it, it'll just push your nipples down a little bit. A great example, if it pops in your head, think of Ultimate Warrior. If you think of the Ultimate Warrior and all those posters you saw, he just looked fantastic, but then his titties went down like this. Uh, th that is not just from growth hormone use, that's from what we call abuse. Uh, but, but, but I'll just share with you. And then, and, and the testosterone, one thing that it will really affect is, is up in your traps. And, and one thing about guys that use that, and I was the face of it, we know our own. So when a guy comes out and starts doing interviews and he starts saying certain things, it's a tell to us. Now I'll know once I see him, but, but I can also hear certain things. And I even had teammates in my room, names, names that you would know, very big names that would, uh, you know, preach it out. Know, they, they never do that. And then I had one of them, he was trying to warm up for a fight and he couldn't warm up in the back and he couldn't warm up because his damn shoulders were so tight. He couldn't, get, he couldn't get his hand and just keep, God, my shoulders are so tight. That is a huge tell that only comes from testosterone use. And sure enough, about three months later, he had to come out, get an exemption. He was on testosterone, but I, and I didn't know. I never knew. I knew that night in the locker room when he couldn't warm up because his shoulders were tired. As a fellow testosterone user, I know your secret. I'm currently doing testosterone replacement. Um, I just, by, you know, obviously I'm not an athlete. I don't compete in any way, but I was feeling terrible. I went to the doctor and found out I was at, Chael, this is a real number. My testosterone was at 48. Oh, Jiminy Christmas. That's dangerously low. Dangerously low. I mean, the doctor was kind of stunned. He did another test and it went up to like 80 something, but still, uh, still very low. So I'm taking it from you know, maintenance, but I've noticed a massive difference and it is important. So the, the rule as it stands in the UFC, let's say some fighter had for whatever genetic reason, right? Which is very uncommon. I think the age that you're fighting, but if you did have a, a something that made it that low, could you take testosterone if it was prescribed by a doctor to keep you just at a normal rate to bring it to a normal height? Or is there no taking it? You're just out of the UFC. If you use it, no taking it, you're out of the UFC. If you use it, that did not used to be true. Uh, you could use it. You had to disclose it at one point. That changed a number of jurisdictions where you would need to do it ahead of time and get what's called an exemption, which was just a piece of paper. If the guys filed and got it, great. If they didn't do it, they would be suspended. It was simple as that. And I tell you that because it became such a mess. And we never had a guy. We had a number of guys who had doctors and swear, and they had all the paperwork in place that they did, in fact, have the very gynotropian and the, and, and the very things that you're speaking about, they were all lies. There wasn't one of us that had it, but we could get the paperwork and we could get somebody to sign off on it. So one day the commission comes in 
with no warning and they they bring the gavel down and they threw it out completely and that was in nevada and everybody followed suit it was a little bit of a problem i it was very legal i had the exemptions i was literally the face of this okay hey you got to do the way chael did and here's how he did it, and here's what you got to do and when they bring the gavel down it's still in your system you have nothing you can do the rules change. i won't take it after you bring the gavel down i took the i've still got it in my system they came in and tested me and popped me for it. That was such a dirty move by them. That was such an incredibly dirty move. I had approval and it was within the rule. They go, well, wait, the, but the rule changed. Like, <laughs> yeah, it sure did. It sure did, guys. <laughs> yeah. They switch now, right? So they're not with USADA anymore. That's right. So it's just a different uh, company that does it. And they're super intense. I mean, they show up like, because I think a lot of people are interested in this that, that are just regular UFC fans, which I know I'm one of them, is like, so they show up two in the morning, whatever, unannounced, and pee in a cup and they watch you, right? That's essentially what these fighters are going through. It could happen at any point. So it's almost or virtually or completely impossible for any fighter in the UFC to be using any performance-enhancing drug right now without getting caught. Is that true? Yes. That is, that is for a broad stroke and for public appearances, I will, I, I will give you the answer of, uh, of yes. They, they have essentially thought of everything, but it is a constant game of cat and mouse. And, and, and that never ends. And uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, really, I'm, trying to, I'm really trying to think of how to answer your question. But, but the answer is yes. And Usada, by the way, was great. And this, this new agency, they follow the same protocols and procedures. So if you like Usada, you like these guys. It's the same testing. They send it off to the same lab. They have this, the logistical masters just like Usada. Usada did a very good job, but they didn't always have very good people. Like Usada did some things to the UFC from a public standpoint, where the UFC is the customer writing a ten million dollar check that was very underhanded, and uh, the UFC was was disgusted. They they could not believe that their partner and more part their employee they're writing the check would do that to them and ended up breaking it up. But the new agency they're with, though I can't produce their name, and it's 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 like a number. It's like five three one. It's a number. But they're, they're awesome. No, they're, they're, they're really good. They, yeah, broad stroke, of course, because it is cat and mouse. But yeah, that culture is gone. That stuff and in, in, in inclusion in our sport. And, and by the way, if I talk about culture, like if a guy got caught, the crowd might be disgusted, but the locker room wasn't. You could go show your face. Hey, man, you got hit. How'd you get hit so that I don't? It, it was a cultural thing. It's not that way anymore. If you were using that stuff, they would be disgusted with you. They, you you'd, you'd really let people down. And, uh, you know, everybody's really agreed to something special here. They've really got a level playing field. It's, it's done very well, in fairness. What about WWE? All right, listen, so for fit, for $50,000, I will give you the number of a WhatsApp, a double encrypt. It's going to cost you $50,000 in Bitcoin. You will be juiced to the gills, and you will not be caught. So, okay. so no, they are not. It's not quite what, but it's, but not, it's, it's, it's not meant foolproof. to be. Okay, got it. There is a doctor somewhere on the planet that could fuck the system. That yes. could potentially do it in a way where you metabolize at a certain time and get it out of your system and be clean, but it would take a lot of money and it would take some back channeling, correct? Okay, well, that, that's a game that will never stop either. Like, like, it's not banned unless it's on the banned list. Now, it could be a performance enhancer, and this is a tremendous misunderstanding by everybody because the media doesn't understand it, so they say it wrong. Like, they, they believe that performance enhancers are banned. Well, excuse me, everything's a performance enhancer. Like, that's quite literally the definition of medicine. The opposite definition would be, take this and it'll make you worse. That's called malpractice. So that is not true. Performance enhancers are not banned. And by the way, there are also banned things that are absolutely not performance enhancers. They're just banned. So, so you got this list. Well, that's a chemical breakdown. If you brought a chemist in and he changed one molecule and it took it to something else that by definition was not on the list until it was discovered and then got put on the list, the guy, the guy could go. So, but that, that game, I must tell you, as much as I just told you that in theory, I don't even have a rumor of somebody that did that. I, I, I do not believe in that at all. I'm just saying that, that you could. They have a couple... Yes, th there's holes within the system. There's holes within every system. But yes, th there is a very well-organized group for $50,000 in Bitcoin, we'll handle it all for you. And uh, yes, yes, it, it's not bulletproof. That's very specific, Chael, 50,000 in yeah. Bitcoin. I like it. Okay, we'll keep it at yeah. that. Um, when you look at the guys at the w, in the W- Let me give you an example. Let me just, just, let's just, just two guys talking, okay? Okay, two guys talking. You have to do certain things if you are in the pool and priority one that is absolutely an obligation of you is what's called whereabouts. You must update where you're going to be. If you're going to be on an airplane, great. But if you miss the flight, 
you need to sit down and tell, I didn't catch that, and I'm gonna be on this other one. And it's done through an app, and it's, it, it's, it's very accessible to do. It didn't used to be. It was very against fighters, but it's, it is pretty accessible now. They do a very good job, but I'm just sharing with you, if you have three whereabouts violations, that means they show up to test you and you're not where you said you would be. Three in a calendar year is an automatic fail. And some guys are just, were lazy with it or overlooked it or didn't know how serious it was and did get hit. And other guys, of course, were gaming the system. You've got about five hours from when you take certain stuff. And if they happen to show up, don't answer the door and say you weren't there. You get three of those. I'm sharing that with you. Two guys, just you and I talking, right? Just us. Nobody's listening. But for $50,000 in Bitcoin, you will learn the holes within the system of USADA. The first and foremost is a clause called a good night's sleep, which means while they tell everybody they come 24-7, 365, you actually, per the contract, have from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. You now have a seven-hour window and a number of substances, if you flush them with an IV, are out of there in three and a half hours, but the results can last for 90 days. We didn't know that an IV would beat the system. USADA made a huge mistake, banned IVs, thus telling everyone that that will beat their science. So that was a huge mistake that USADA made. Secondly, when you do the whereabouts, okay, they got to get to you for $50,000 in Bitcoin. There is a very specific resort hotel that you will be put out that will have guards at the gate that will stop their ability to get to you. And you can, I was there. You never knocked on the door. You didn't answer your phone. The rule doesn't say I have to answer my phone as much as you'd like me to. It just says I have to be there. And unless you were there yourself, you don't know that I wasn't. And I was. Why'd you get stopped at the gate? They'll never know. They'll get a run around. You'll be in a different room. You'll be over here. Whatever it did, they'll usher you in the back. There's a private jet waiting. I mean, th these guys are very good. 50,000 Bitcoin gets you a lot of stuff. But I'm just sharing. That's one example. That's a simple example. But yeah, I mean, we, we've had fighters that have been lost in airports before. <laughs> Lost it. Fighters, certain airports, it turns out they have hotels. And I mean, you can, I guess you can live in that. Nobody even knew this. You get off the runway, you go over here, and USADA can't get in. It's a private location that's secretly secure. Like, there's a number of really weird stories that go around, but they go around for a reason. They, they go around for a reason, man. It's, it's, a, it's a very tough game at, at, at the top. And that, by the way, I tell you for entertainment, that is all true, but that isn't happening. I'm not suggesting for you that that's happening. I will just tell you, there are some sports on some levels where those guys have that money and, and there are people that are out there playing that game. And that is largely how they would play it. They, they understand the rules. They understand what it was. I'm not joking about that specific resort where they will stay. You will not get through if you're USADA. And, uh, you know, whether the guy's there or not, it's, it's not the point. You got to get to the place where he said he was. If you're going to say he wasn't, they'll stop you from doing that. You know, I tell you, if, I, if this was a thing in the entertainment industry, <laughs> where you couldn't juice if you were a writer. Yeah. All you got to do is go onto a movie lot. Good luck, USADA, right? Good right. luck. And it's like, no, no, yeah. I was there. But the front gate, all you got to do is not call in a drive-on pass, okay? Or misspell the name. They'll never get on. So this resort sort of services the same. This quote-unquote resort. I'm going to say alleged resort. We know it's not yeah. a real resort. And we also know two that 50, talking. right, two guys talking. We also know $50,000 in Bitcoin, whatever, whatever is probably not the accurate number. You're just making up things. I get it. I get it, but throw it out. However, if I was to, at this age of 56, start my UFC career and I needed something like to happen, something like that to happen, and I had 50,000 laying around, I could text you. Sure. Okay, yeah. good. Good to know. Yeah. And I do wonder, I do wonder the science of it sometimes. There, there is a number of people and boy, it sure is small. Like everybody that gets hit was Mr. Innocent, except me. I was the only guy that you found four things in my system where you're not that good because I had seven. Like I, I was the only guy that, that really told the truth about it, but I didn't know I was breaking rules. It, it was one of these things where you go, what, that's banned? I mean, like what you said earlier, where you go, hey, what if you got something appropriately prescribed by a doctor? I always assumed that that, that was allowed. So I'm only sharing with you, like my overwhelmingly honesty out of it, which is what got me through it. I didn't mean to be, it wasn't a strategy. I genuinely didn't know. Now I only tell you that because most guys are, oh, silly me, I had no idea. Of course they're lying, or they took something else tainted and it was tainted with this, and they got it from China, and they, they, they're trying to take Winstraw, which was supposed to be out, but it was, it was mixed with clem fluterol, and they generally haven't heard of clem fluterol. They could go and take a lie detector's test, but they knew they were taking Winstraw. It's not what they said. I'm just sharing with you. There are two gyms in our sport where everybody in that gym is juiced, and I don't use that as an exaggeration. Everybody but the owner of the gym. You go in, you've got the 17-year-old front desk girl. She's juiced out of her mind. Everybody in those gyms are juiced. And I have had my own personal opinion that the gyms are doing it, that they have found a way to get it in, into the system. Well, it was through the soaps. It was through the hand sanitizers. There's ways to get these things into people. Sit, juice a whole team. All of a sudden, you got 
Right, you got the, the Jamaican track team that genuinely thinks they're clean, not knowing their cook's been, I mean, they're all yoked up, but a lot of them could pass lie detectors. They genuinely don't know it. And that's a whole nother game of filth. If you're taking an athlete and you're juicing them, you know, the Russian uh, doping that was well-documented, well-caught, and cost them two bursts at the Olympic Games, I just share with you, those athletes genuinely did not know. They were children, they were uneducated, they go to the cafeteria, you take this, you take, it was one of these things. And that is a different level of dirty, man. If you're an adult and you're ju against their knowledge, man, I don't like that. And I can't prove those two gyms are doing it. I will just tell you, it is one hell of a coincidence. When I tell you the whole place is juiced, except the owner, except the owner, you take everybody in the gym, and then here's the owners, this skinny guy. Man, that's, that's one hell of a coincidence. Okay, let me get this straight, right? So we're saying allegedly the 50,000 Bitcoin, right? We know that, sure. whatever, it's alleged, sure. two guys talking, yeah. okay? We're also yeah. saying this hotel that could potentially yeah. have guard, guards out yes. front that could stop you. Now we're saying two gyms, are we saying two gyms, hypothetically, are we saying two gyms yeah. that we would know as a, as a fan of UFC if I heard? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The one thing about heads, they work. You will genuinely have, you, you will go to a superhuman level. And all that that means is no matter how hard you worked or how disciplined you are, how well you ate, you can't reach the level that a shot in the ass with a ped will take you to. It will take you to a super human level. Like, take the Tour de France. The Tour de France should blame nobody but themselves for how dirty that is and how many riders have died. A human body is not made to do what they're asking them to do. They must go and do that. Now, coming, coming from a user, so you take maybe a character flaw by me, but I'm sharing with you, a human body can't do that unless you take it to a superhuman level. Now. The reason I'm telling you that, you will have teams that come out of nowhere. We, we, we've seen this, I'll give you a, a, a nerdy uh, and well-respected college, Cornell. You can go look at certain athletic programs they have there and these smart nerds that can barely get in are simply not going to get to that. But when the juice goes around, man, it goes. When you have Jamaica that comes out of nowhere, when it goes around, when you go back to 1972, which is the first time they discovered anabolics, and it was in the female swimmers of the German Olympic team, they're going to set records and you're going to do it overnight. We had lost the Americans, uh, or rather we had beat in the Olympic games in 2001, that was COVID Olympics, the Iranians. The Iranians got a brand new coach, a brand new system, held the world championships, which is the exact same tournament with a different name as the Olympics. Two months later and Iran cleaned up. Well, yeah, if you bring in a guy that's willing to bring in the juice and he can find a way to get it into his athletes, it's gonna be very hard to beat. So yes, when you ask me, are these known gyms? Of course, of course. I would have a very hard time not having champions if they're juiced and working hard versus guys that are working hard and unjuiced. It's, it's, uh, it, they work, is, is I think my, my overwhelming point to you. Let's say, two guys talk, okay, you gotta resort, they keep the guards, two guys talking, but what do whereabouts mean? How would you define whereabouts? Because every athlete has the same opinion. Where am I? Me, right now, chill, what are your whereabouts? And I would give you a very specific dress in a beautiful city known as Westland, Oregon, and I would give you a studio of 2A. I would think that's what it means, but that's not the definition. So let's say you've got a guy that went hunting and he put coordinates down. He put coordinates that covered 36 wilderness acres where no cell phone lives or could be expected to live. And he's out there hunting and he did update it. He updated the list and he told you where he was. But now you got to find him within coordinates. You're not even going to try. That happens all the time. And I've just wow. given you a couple of examples with holes within the system. And you would be stunned how many sports champions hunt that you didn't know about. <laughs> that is just the truth. Wow. Hunting resorts and just gaming the system with the location. Fascinating. Yeah. When you see these guys, what is the rule? They get upset. They'll take a look and go, hey, what the hell do you mean? You're 36 miles within the, what does that even mean? You're on a map. How'd you get there? Well, I took a helicopter in and I am there. You said to put where, I, that's where I am. Please come anytime that you would like. Well, cell phones don't work. Please, I don't have a helicopter. Something tells me you're not going to come test me. And that is the answer. What, what do we do with a guy that gives coordinates because he's hunting? We don't test him. That is the answer. And I'm only sharing with you, I mean, th these are weak things. People don't know this. I'm giving you cutting edge stuff. There's a few people that know that with for enough amount of Bitcoin on an app that's double encrypted, you'll get the same information. I'm not trying to be, I'm just sharing with you. It's, it's interesting. There's a substance, Socio. Uh, a number of guys were coming out with this tainted meat or I was eating horse meat or I ate kangaroo meat. Like they had these really weird stores. Canelo Alvarez is one of them. When Canelo got popped, who was 
clearly juicing. He said I had tainted meat, and they were kind of able to get, well, he, it might have, and they lowered his suspension. And what I'm sharing with you is I don't know that he took it on purpose. They might have tainted his food. Like, there's, there's a thing when I, when I talk about, you know, that I, I suspect these gyms, whether it's in the hand sanitizer or the shampoo, they, they've got a way to get it into everybody in the gym. But there's a number of substances where the best sciences of USADA will tell you it has to be taken sub-Q. You must inject this into either belly fat or a muscle. They are completely wrong. There is something known as, um, oh, for heaven's sake, DMSO. And it was for veterinarian use. But it is a topical that will take what, and it will take through your skin into your veins so you don't have to inject. So if you were to have something such as a hand sanitizer and a guy rubs it on and it has DMSO and it has EPO mixed in it, he'll think he's sanitizing his hands and you are now juicing him. And there is ways where guys would have Tainted meats. This got to, the very store I told you got tested for the Rio Olympics in, it was not Rio because it was 2016 and Rio was 12. Wherever they were in 16, it was a Turkish wrestler and he popped and he was favored to win. He was supposed to win the gold medal and he popped. And there was something about his denial that people believed. He denied like everybody else and said, I don't know, but there was something about it where some leaders that, man, this guy might be telling the truth. And they went and investigated it. And sure enough, he had a guy in the training room, hey, let me work on your shoulder. Hey, let me, let me get some cream. Let me work on your shoulder. And he was rubbing with DMSO. He was putting EPO and testosterone into this guy's system. The guy legitimately did not know. But you had in, in certain countries where, where, where Olympic sport is number one. They don't have an NFL. They don't have an NBA. And the coaches will be paid. The coaches will be incentivized based on win. And now all of a sudden, if I can get... Uh, something into my athlete, nobody will know about it because I discovered this thing called DMSO and he thinks it's like a, a Ben Gay I'm using to rub onto his shoulder. There's incentives and it's not just Chael talking of theory. This was documented and this happened. And you have USADA swearing up and down. The only way you can get it, it's like, no, USADA, you're, you're wrong. You'll always be wrong because there'll always be a scumbag better than you scumbags. They will game the system. People will figure it yeah. out. You know, it's funny. It's right now, and correct me if I'm wrong, there are two types of testosterone, right? There is cipionate, I believe is the name yep. of it, right? Which is what I take, okay? Which is, you know, injected, yep. right? And then, because they, they asked me when I started, they said, do you want to use a cream on your yep. shoulders? You rub it into your shoulders, but you have to do it more often with the shot. You only have to do it once a week. I chose the shot for just, you know, convenience purposes, because I will forget to do it every day. Um, but yeah, so that's 100% not true that Yuzada is saying that you have to just be sub whatever, give it by needle. So really interesting. What about WWE? What do you see with those guys right now? Is it strictly enforced there or not? Not at all. Oh, no, heaven's sakes. No, no. Um, but, but they put up the act and, and they do test the guys, but it, it's greatly a matter of who is testing you and what lab do they send it to? Like if you are doing a, a quest test, which is most common and quest is great, by the way, but I'll just share with you, um, you're now dealing with an IQ test. You're simply dealing with a guy, does he know the rules? Does he know when this gets out of his system? And if you fail, well, you fail an IQ test. Olympic Games have very specific tournaments that they will test you. Like, it's not quite what you think. And that's where USADA was so good. It is going to be 24-7, uh, 365, aside from the coordinates and aside from the good night sleep clause. But nobody even knows that those are closets. Like, nobody even knows what I just said until I just said it right now. So. I'm sharing with you, like, they are very good, and, but that's what the WWE does. Hey, guys, we're going to test you. Here's the day, and you better be clean. Our bar, the suspension's going to be tremendous, but it's a joke. It's a show. We're putting on a show. They paid $99 for a seven-panel test. Dana White pays $40,000 for one test. That is the difference with the lab at UCLA, and there's also one in Salt Lake that USADA goes to, and I realize it's a different company, but for purposes of not knowing the lingo, I'll say Usada, eh, and that's the difference. It's, it, it, is, it is very, uh, you're going to be there. You talked about, hey, they're going to watch you pee into a cup, whereas the other ones, you know, maybe maybe it was your pee and maybe it wasn't. Maybe you got a whiz in there. It's not one of those things. But then you put on a show. You tell the public and you tell your shareholders, we're going to really come after you. Right. And then you got guys showing up with traps like this and nipples yeah. pointing to the floor, et cetera. Yeah. All I think and so, and so, by the way, it shouldn't be that way. Guys should be like you and I. This is wonderful medicine. You will not meet a doctor that says testosterone and estrogen and some of these other are not wonderful medicines. Now, you have use versus abuse. So you have a number of doctors that do say, no, hey, you got to ban it because human nature says if two is appropriate, 
four is better, I'll have nine. And they're right. And abuse is a very different thing, but it is a very wonderful medicine. WWE is not a competition. They're not a sport. It's completely, you got guys like John Cena that come out and swear on a guy, he should be, he should be hang if he came out and did that. Why? Why would you say that, John? You're on it. You know that you're on it. And by the way, it's legal. You went out, found the workaround, which is to get a prescription. Why wouldn't you share that? Because you look great and your attitude seems like you feel great. Why wouldn't you want other people to do that? And the only two people that I have ever seen that came out and told the truth was Suzanne Summers, rest her soul, and Sylvester Stallone. And Stallone came out to the point that he was teaching people, well, he said, hey, there's something called growth hormone. This is on the shelves across the board of Mexico. It should be here. It's the fountain of youth. This is why I look great. He's the only guy that told the truth. And now he's 70 some years old. He looks beautiful. He's still a movie star. He's in great shape. He feels good. He tried to help other people. He tried to tell other people, this is legal, good medicine. Here's the doctors you go to. Here's what you look for. But then you'll have other people that go, I, I didn't do that. I got these muscles on my own. Why lie? There's nothing wrong with taking a legal medicine. There's nothing wrong with using science and doing things in an appropriate way. That's why we have medicine. We encourage that. Yeah, it saved me. It saved me, Jail. You remember, you even said it the other day when you saw me, you were like, you look different. Uh, yep. 240 pounds, you know, versus 193 pounds where I'm at sure. now. The, uh, the willingness and the ability to work out more effectively um, and train at boxing and I love it and I feel better than ever at 56. There is no question I am at my peak. Um, and it's all because, or in part, at least, to the testosterone. Um, I am curious, though, how did Suzanne Summers, what was, what, did, what was her deal? What was it about? Plastic surgery or? Estrogen. For her, it was for estrogen. She was the one to come out and say, hey, the, the, the dominant hormone for women, and many people will tell you, and even a number of Google searches will tell you, that men take testosterone and women take estrogen. Actually, men need both, but women also have both. Women do have uh, testosterone, it is just not the dominant hormone within their body. And Suzanne Summers, the one, because she came out, she looked amazing. She was using growth hormone. She was using estrogen mainly. She wrote a book on diet, but she did let you know, hey, as much as I do follow this diet, and I would like you to do it. Let me disclose something else to you. I have found a medicine. It gives me more energy. It makes me feel better. One of the reasons I can go to the gym and I have the discipline to do the diet is because I need less sleep and I need less sleep because I have more energy and I have more energy because I started monitoring these very important levels that I have found at a certain age in women will decline. So I was able to bring that back and get me closer to that 18 to 25, what a lot of people consider their prime. And Suzanne Summers, while writing the book, was one of the first honest people to include that. And I see these guys, man, they're everywhere. Buy this supplement, buy this supplement. None of them work. Testosterone works. And it's cheaper than the supplement and you're using it. Why wouldn't you tell people that? There's nothing embarrassing about working with a doctor and taking nothing. Athletes gave it a bad name because they used it to cheat. Athletes are less than 1% of the population. Why wouldn't you tell the truth? Sylvester Stallone did and people revere him for it. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's the, I, I, wish, I wish menopause on no woman. You know, I've seen the effects of menopause in friends and uh, it's really difficult. And, but I'm also surprised and shocked by how many women are like, no, 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 I'm not gonna take any uh, estrogen supplements and no, 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 no. I'll just go through it. It's like, why would you wanna suffer? You know, and sure. they do, these women suffer. It's a real, it, it, because it's hormonal, right? It's not a drug, it's a hormone, it's different. And hormones are, you know, when I went to go get my testosterone because I was so low, like I said, the doctor said to me, Dr. David, his name is, and he said to me, what do you think testosterone does for you? Fair question, right? I didn't 100% know. And I said, okay, uh, I'm gonna say it improves my libido. Uh, I'm also gonna say it gives me strength. No, 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 no. He says, it does everything everything for you. It is your life force as a man. It is your actual spirit. It is who you are in your core. It affects every single part of your life. And I'm like, this dude's dramatic, right? Two weeks in, three weeks in, and ever since then, it's amen. It saved me, Chael. I'm a big proponent. Love it. Yeah. yeah. And, that's, and that's use versus abuse. And, 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 and the real key on that is, is le the, the, the least amount you can take and get a benefit. That's your amount. And people's minds don't work that way. So you kind of kind of want to disclose that to them too. Hey, let me tell you something. When you talk about testosterone does everything. So when your number's tested at 48, I will tell you, if you would have broken your leg, it would not have healed. You need that testosterone to heal it. You'll hear about a, a 90 year old man. And he fell, he broke his hip and he died or he broke his leg and he died. And you never know why. I don't understand why. Because it can't heal. Your body cannot heal. It needs that testosterone. 
So when your doctor told you it does everything, like no man, these are these are very special things. It's it's believed that that is why you get older, why ultimately we die. Yep, I feel it's the fountain of youth for me so far, and it's amazing. You you mentioned Dana White spending all that money on on the testing, right? You know, he also spent a ton of money on that Gary Brecca situation, right? Which was I find fascinating, and I love that Dana did it. And you look at somebody like Dana and how much he's changed his life, changed his lifestyle, how different he looks. Do you? Is that something that interests you to find out when, because he gave Dana like 10 and a half years to live, to live, um, depending on a million factors, whatever they factored in. And I'm sure it's not cheap. I hear it's like $100,000, but I could be wrong about that. Um, How do you, where do you sit on that? Do you want to know? Like, do you want to know? Would you take that test? I don't know. I was influenced by that by a doctor one time. I always thought, yes, I always thought I would like it on any topic. I would like the most information I can. I mean, in, in fairness, as human beings, we're all dying. Some of us just have more information about when. So, but a doctor influenced me. I went to high school with him and it had to do with my wife. My wife went in and had, they call it mammogram, it had something to do with your breast. And he said, do you want that information? And he, and, and he said this, he said, well, what if we find it? And it, you got about 20 years, but God's planning on you being hit by a bus in eight. Do you want that information? And it was a simple question. And now you have to, my answer was no. I get your point and no, I'll, I'll let it play out. Same. I feel the same exact way. I would like to know how healthy I am for sure. And I would do all that. But to give me a prediction as to when I'm going to die, no thank you. I mean, but I look, hey, I look at somebody like Dana and, and how it affected his life in such a positive way. And it's very inspiring. But yeah, no thanks. Because you're right. You could find out, hey, I get 10 years left if, and then you're depressed. Right. And you didn't little did you know you're going to get hit by a bus anyway. And all that depression and all that anxiety was for nothing. But I think if you have Dana's mentality, which is when I find out I am going to do something about it, I don't think most people have that jail. You know, I don't think most people have that discipline. I think they find out 10 years and they hit the bottle. You know what I mean? So sure. uh, I really think it's personality dependent. But for me, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I'm going to live forever, bro. Just FYI. It's testosterone all day. It's going to help. Yeah. Me. yeah and I, I, I'll, I'll wrap with this. I, I don't want to weigh in on that because I mean, the, the snake oil that is involved with that is, is beyond infuriating, but you can't tell the truth. You, you don't have a choice if that's the life that you go into because you, you can't go get $10,000 a week from a guy. If you tell him to take a shot that takes four seconds and cost you uh, 40 bucks for a 30 day supply. I mean, you have to have smoke in me. You got to tell him it's about diet. It's about this. And it's about this blood work. It's about this. And you've got to exercise. I'll give you an example. If you took a 50-year-old man and you had him trained for a year and you took a 20-year-old and you didn't have him trained at all, when that year is over, the 20-year-old will be stronger than the 50-year-old. Now, the answer for that is testosterone. So let me give you another example. You take a guy and he lifts nonstop. You take another guy. He doesn't lift at all, but he takes a shot of testosterone each week. At the end of that week, he will be the stronger guy. And, and the reason I tell you this, the con on it is you give a guy 20 things to do and you show him his numbers. He's going to feel a hell of a lot better for one. You can show him his numbers and his blower. You can prove to him through science. I mean, this is how every cult works is you bring the Bible and you show him like one verse. You don't tell him everything that came before. You just show him this one verse. Every scam works the same way. It's all the testosterone. The 20 things that you are doing are bull. The one thing that worked was that shot of testosterone, but you can't make a career on that. You can't write a book on that. You can't go on speaking. You can't do any of those things. If you did the other 19, you left that one out. Bring up the blood work because you don't have a single benefit. The only thing that worked was the testosterone. And those snake oil salesmen know that. But they, you got to add, right? You got to talk. You got to add. You got to have time. You got to confuse a guy. Like the best, the smartest guy in the room is just whoever talk, and confuses you. Like I see this in politics all the time with a foreign policy expert. Like if you know the difference between Iraq and Iran and you can sneak in the word like, Mukhamedijan and, and, and Hezbollah, if you can do that, you will be crowned the smartest guy in the room because nobody knows what you just said. And then you're really good if you can say Gaza Shrek, Tel Aviv, like now you're a freaking genius and you sh- should go work in the White House. It's, it's a scam. It's n- none of those things are, let me, let me tell you how this works real fast. But most of the life works that way. So when you, when you ask me about some of these guys, it's like, yeah, man, overall, yes, they are right. Because they have this one thing. The other 20 is a con, but they know it's a con. And that's, that's the part that, that can bother me. You know, it's funny you say that. It's exa- my, When I was a kid, my grandfather had this, this, this thing, this sign up in the basement. And it said, if you can't dazzle them with brilliance, baffle them with bullshit. Yep. Okay? And it is <laughs> yeah. as true as anything, right? Um, you said another thing, Chael, that you were talking about 20-year-old guy, right? Uh, versus a 50-year-old guy, 50-year-old guy working out 10 times more. 
but the testosterone that's coursing through the vein of the 20 year old is going to change, is going to make him just more fit and better. Um, speaking about fight picks, with that in mind, we spoke about it a little bit, but Tyson versus Jake Paul. How does that, you have a 58 year old guy, you have a 28 year old guy. I mean, I'm sure, you know, Tyson is doing what he has to do to stay fit and keeping whatever, but just age. I mean, how do you see it working out there? What, what kind of difference do we have there? <gasps> What a shocking risk. What a shocking risk that Tyson is taking. Like, like his life is different based on this result. If he goes down to, to Jake Paul, I mean, Mike Tyson is one, and I felt it myself when he comes in the room, like he is one of the most revered and recognizable sports talents ever, including the current famous guys, man. People will, will push them out of the way to get to Mike Tyson. And uh, yeah, man, it's, it's a risk and there's no part. And he knows this. He knows I'm going to lose. Well, I was 58 and I tried. No, man, it doesn't work that way. You beat the guy or you didn't beat the guy. And uh, the other side is if he does, if he gets inside and gets to the body before he gets exhausted, which is going to happen within five minutes, five years ago when he fought Roy Jones, he was exhausted in five minutes. Like he didn't get, he didn't get better at this in, in the last five years. And um, yeah, I'll just share with you. I, I, I hope that he has found some of the science, by the way, like, like if you're willing to smoke pot and do these th these kinds of things. Why wouldn't you be willing to take something th that would help you? That is a very bizarre concept. John Jones got hit one time. He got hit with cocaine. And so people are going, hey, do you think he's ever done steroids? And I'm trying to slow him down. Go, hey, guys, guys, okay. let me tell you what you just asked me, okay? You just told me that a guy will take something that will get him imprisoned, that is completely illegal, that could kill him. That's what you just told me. But now you're asking me if he would take something legal and allowed that would help him. Do you understand how silly that concept is? Like if, if somebody has a child, I don't need to ask them if they kissed a girl, right? Like no, nobody got to the step of creating the child without kissing. Like the baseball rules are, are very true in life, right? You don't get to second until you get to first. And I, I just share that with you. Like you're telling me a dude get coke and you're questioning whether he did growth? Are you joking? Come on. Come on. So, so gun yeah. ahead, like we did with Max and Ilya, you were going to pick these just gun ahead. Who wins that fight? All right. I am going to go with Max. I'm going to go with Max. No, no, no. Are you said, yeah, you said Max. Sorry. I'm talking about oh. uh, Tyson, uh, Jake. Oh my goodness. I mean, I just, I just don't see a way for Mike. I just, I simply don't see a way for Mike. Now you, you can never overlook and I'll sit back and enjoy the show. Like pro wrestling rules the world, pro, pro wrestling and what you're doing there and where the swerve is and, and, Mike is not going to agree to go down to Jake, but they could very easily already have an agreement that it's a draw, or maybe Jake's going to go over and, and do the J-O-B for a certain amount of money. I don't think so. I think he's a true and driven compare, competitor. I'm just sharing with you. First off, don't overlook the fact that this is not what you think it is. Secondly, um, wow, I don't know why Mike's doing the fight. And I know people love to answer it on there and go, for the money, it's Netflix, for the, shut up. You, you, he's not doing it for the money, right? There, there, there's something else here. So, you know, does he really think he can beat him? Nobody knows boxing like Mike. If Mike watches this kid and goes, man, look, here's the mistake he makes and here's how I'm going to exploit it, I'd have to take Mike's word for it. So I, I, I tend, I have a habit and it, it has cost me a lot of money to favor the guys that have come before us when reality says the current guy is better. But uh, you got a gun to head. I think that Mike's either already worked out a way or he's going to find a way, but I'm I'm going to go with Mike. I love that. Okay, so my pick on that one, very similar take on it. And I, I, I heard a story recently that Mike Tyson saw Jake Paul apparently in his gym. He was working out, at, this was years ago, before they even thought it, but he hadn't even met Jake Paul yet and saw him when he was early training and thought he looks like a club fighter and he'll never be anything more, which is apparently he's on record saying. Um, he's not Mike Tyson. Uh, he doesn't have the experience. He doesn't have the big game experience. He got beat by Tommy Fury right? Who's a good boxer, not even in the, the realm of Mike Tyson. Yes, Mike Tyson's 58, but I think he's working smart and he really wants to win. I think Mike is going to find a way. And I think you said it perfectly. It's to the body. It's hurting Jake in the body and getting that, the, that tank turn and just those uppercuts. And I think he's going to shock the world and beat yeah. this young kid. And I think the world is going to celebrate it. And I don't I got, think Jake Paul is going to be any less famous as a result, and I don't think it's going to hurt his brand. I think it's going to be just fine, but that's the way this thing should play out, and I hope sure. that it plays out. I don't want to see Mike get tired and get beat up, and I don't want to see him get knocked out like Tyron Woodley did, who I like a lot. I just don't want to see that. I don't think anybody in the world wants to see Mike Tyson get hurt or knocked out at this point. So let's hope yeah. it doesn't go that way. Let's hope our prediction's right. 
I think surprisingly that includes uh, Jake Paul. I mean, he'll do he'll do what he needs to do. Jake, Jake's the real deal. He's working hard. He's he, he's he's turned out to be a real competitor, a real good athlete. On top of that, but uh, so it's one thing about it. We're all questioning Mike's ability. In fact, the last time we saw Mike on camera in a still photo was on TMZ, and he was in a wheelchair after he was taken off an airplane, which was either a heart attack or a stroke, something very serious. I don't tease that, but for that to be a footage, and now we're going to go put him in a, in a main event, I mean, th th this is a very dangerous proposition. I'll leave it at that. But I'll tell you this. you got to show him in the gym. you got to show the people that he's still got it. And in fact, that's not just Chael's opinion. Let's go back five years to when Mike had his comeback fight against Roy Jones. They showed us him in the gym, and golly, he still had some of that speed. He still had that bob that we love to see, so he could still go this way and come this way. He could still throw that hook and come up, uh, you know, uh, that uppercut and turn it into a hook. They haven't done that this time. In fact, they tried to get away with it, and when they tried to get away with it, they put out footage from the Roy Jones, and they tried to act like it was right now, and they got caught because Mike was wearing these weird, they were, I'm colorblind, but they were like this turquoise, and nobody knew if they were quite shorts or underwear, but my point is they stood out, so when you see them again recycled five years later, we all go, wait a minute, that's the same video. Where's the current video? And for some reason, there's none. In fact, I think he's training with Rafael Cadero because that's the footage they keep putting out. But again, that was for the Roy Jones. I think that's what he's doing. I don't know that. I don't know that he's even in the state of California. I don't know anything about it. I don't know if he's running in the morning, sparring in the afternoon. I don't know anything about it. And there has never been a countdown video for boxing. We, you know, you show he's on the speed bag and he's over here and he's jumping the rope, which has nothing to do with it. He's shadow boxing in the ring. Like, it's one of these things. You always show it and they're not. And I just wonder why. Like, is it because it's not happening and you don't have any footage? Is it because it is happening and it looks so bad you can't put that out? Or are you keeping a secret? Is Iron Mike up to, and that's the one I'm hoping, man. I'm rolling with that one. I'm rolling the Mike's up to something. He's in the hills. He's locked down in privacy and he's getting ready to bring the tiger, man. That's what I'm rolling with. Yes, please. I, we all hope that he shows up that night looking like old Mike with that mean mug on his face and he comes down that, ooh, buddy. No cameras, no cameras because I'm so locked down. I'm so focused. There's no, I don't have time for interviews. I'm focused on shit. That's what I'm hoping. Nobody's told that side of the story, but I'm, I'm rolling with it, man. I just don't think the Mike's getting ready to come in on 50 and do a job for anybody. Or he's eating Snickers bars, like Socio yeah. did in Africa. One or the other. But I think, it's the, I think Mike Tyson is, is, tra is trading in silence and he's gonna, is going to surprise us. Jones and Stipe. Jones and Stipe. What do you like? Who do you like? And how do you see it getting done? I really like this fight. And there is a narrative that Stipe is being dismissed by everybody. And I, I, just let me correct that. Stipe is revered by everybody. There is rules in this sport, and there is one guy that is off limits, and he is a first responder, and his name is Stipe Miocic. He is a first responder that is a multimillionaire and wildly famous and goes and cleans the floors of the fire department because he might get called to go save somebody. The guy's off limits. He's as close to a superhero as actually exists. That's why people don't talk about Stipe Miocic. And secondly, it's not that they don't think he's a live dog in this, and some even that he's going to win. Our sport from a narrative standpoint, much like you and I are proving right now, is about what's next. Where does it go? If he gets a win, what does it mean? And because Stipe has announced that he's going to retire, there is nothing to talk about there. there is, if he beats John, so what? It doesn't draw him into anybody. It just puts John against Aspinall for the vacated title that Stipe is going to vacate. Like, like not for nothing. It's going to be John and Tom. It has to be John and Tom. If John beats Stipe, Dana has said he fights Tom. If Stipe doesn't show up, Dana said that John fights Tom. If John loses to Stipe and Stipe retires, which he will, the bait becomes vacated and it goes to John and Tom. So that's the reason there's that conversation, not because Stipe is being counted out. I love Stipe Miocic. Who doesn't love this guy? You're right. He fights fires for fun and because he cares and he's a sweetheart. And he does something that cracks me up. We did it, the Kevin James, we were doing the show in New York. Uh, Kevin turned it around on Stipe and did this to him. Stipe does a really funny thing, like on the Embedded series. He calls his wife, and he'll be talking to his wife or his buddy, and he'll go, uh, he'll go hey, um, yeah, no, listen, I got to tell you something really important. And then he hangs up the phone, okay, <laughs> and screws with people like that. He's like, a, he's like Bam Bam. That's so funny. And Kevin got through Parsons, I believe, got Stipe on the line one day and they were talking and Kevin turned it around on Stipe and did it to him. 
And I just love this guy. How do you not love Steve Amiochi? Okay, great. Okay. So if we look at heels and baby faces and faces and heels, you know, look, Steve is always the face, right? And Jones essentially, a lot of the times, is the heel. We talked earlier about trying to figure out how, right? How can he win the fight? We, do, we talk about fight math, you and me, right? You teach me about fight math, which I love, which is this guy beat this guy and that guy beat that guy. So that means that this guy should be able to beat this guy. We can look at Daniel as a, you know, a uh, common opponent um, and what Daniel did, Stipe bringing the arm down, the whole thing. I don't see a way of, I just don't see how John Jones loses that fight. I just don't see it. Uh, I think his confidence is, John Jones' confidence is high as ever. And Stipe is coming in with the mentality of one more. I'm not saying he's doing it for a money grab by any stretch, but his plan is to retire. And I just don't think that's a healthy mentality going into a fight without that killer, you know, looking into the future. I beat him. It's a chess match. And it's like a checkers situation, unfortunately, when you know where you're at in your career and you know you're going to be hanging up the gloves. Um, for that, I say, I pick Jones with all respect to Stipe. And more importantly, I look forward to Jones versus Aspinall because I don't think I can say the same thing for that fight. Tom Aspinall is young, athletic, fast. He is everything. I mean, who gave John Jones that kind of trouble in the past? Who, who presents the tools that Aspinall presents today? Who in the past had John fought? Who could you put it to? Look, we thought Cyril Ghosn was going to get it done in his first fight. Cyril Ghosn was super athletic. Super Ghosn, Cyril Ghosn, Joe Rogan said it best. He moves like a middleweight and he does. And I was like, oh my God, he's going to post so many, boom, done. Right? So Tom Aspinall is a real threat. And that's where I'm looking two is the Aspinall fight. And I think the UFC is going to position it that well. Yeah, well, and not to mention, that's the only way to finish the story. The entire story of John Jones leaving a world championship. Could you imagine having that kind of success that you could give a world championship away? I could not even, um, I did, and my whole life was dedicated to winning. John Jones gave one back. He said, you take, I don't even want this thing anymore. I'm going to go get another one. But the whole point of giving that back, walking away, spending three years, taking the creatine, the protein shit, and lifting the weight, was to have a bigger man, to have a bigger man that when we go to the weigh-in and we face him off, has a clear, at least in theory, advantage. The whole point was John is going to spot somebody since no one can touch him. He's going to give somebody an advantage. And I mean, this is old school Vince McMahon. He called it a handicap match, but he takes some big, strong guy like Hulk Hogan and have him take on two guys at once. And it was just, it was one of these things. And so John is kind of taking a little page out of that, but Surreal didn't fit the bill. It turned out when Surreal came in, there was only about eight pounds difference, and that's the same thing. And when Stipe comes in, like, Stipe has allegedly put on some size, but that story's not quite being told because he weighed in at 230, which is less than John weighed in for his heavyweight fight by three pounds. So at least in theory of their last fight, John's is bigger. The story doesn't work. The story works with Francis Ngannou, who's gone, and it works with Tom. Tom Aspinall is a big heavyweight. He's taller than John. He's as long as John. He's much heavier than John. He's got much more muscle than John. He didn't need to take three years to put it on. He was born with it. Like, that's the way the story works. And it might be the perfect ending for John, by the way. But that story has to be completed. Yep, 100%. Can't wait, buddy. It's going to be awesome. So those are our picks. Okay, so you're picking, you're picking, so no, you're picking Jones in the Stipe fight with all love to Stipe, yes? Is that what we're saying? I think, yes, I am. Okay, me too. Um... And by the way, do not forget to send me the information about the Bitcoin thing, please. Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? It's, it's, I know oh, yeah. it's not real, but I mean, just send it anyway. Because you like stories. Because you like stories. I understand. Yes. I'm a storyteller. Yeah. And the hotel. Okay. And any other stuff we discussed today. Resort. Resort is a better term. Because see, that's where you have the entrances. That's where you can turn the boys away, regardless of the badges they have on their hip. Are we talking this resort, if it existed, is down south it's in colombia in colombia so the story goes you would be stunned how many top athletes are hunters and could not tell you what a 30-06 is they couldn't tell you how to get a permit they couldn't show you where the heart of a deer was you would be stunned wow but they go they go to the woods and they see somebody with a fresh kill and they're like would you mind if we just put our fighter friend over there with that fresh kill exactly take a quick picture and he's like grabbing the <laughs> the antler <laughs> why didn't you answer your phone that's what they love to say it's not actually in the bio why didn't you answer your phone take my phone records i don't have anything that you called oh that's right you were in an area where there's no reason like 
There's always a way around it. Gosh, this was educational, buddy. All, again, alleged, and we're just two guys talking, yes? Two guys talking. But educational nonetheless.